In this video, we're going to take a look at the second part of the game hacking challenge that I made for Integrity's Lead Up Live CTF 2024. If you missed the first part, go back and check it out. It was basically a Unity game similar to this one, which you could get the flag by changing the score to minus 1337, and you could do that by manipulating the score in memory, use a cheat engine or something, or you could patch the binary with the NSPY. Both are fine. If you really want to, you could also do some crypto stuff around the encrypted flag and extract the keys and stuff. But I think that was the slowest, most difficult option. It'll be interesting to see if people chose to go down that route. Anyway, what's different this time? Well, the only thing that looks different is we have this remaining on screen, which says that we've basically got a minute and 20 seconds before the game will reset. And that's exactly what happens. And maybe we would again go and try and connect Cheat Engine. Maybe we try and run DN Spy. I'm actually not going to do that. For two reasons. One, I don't have it installed on this VM snapshot. And two, I'm planning on looking to see if I can obfuscate it in a way that you can't actually decompile it with DN Spy. I know there used to be like a B byte obfuscator, but I don't think it's in use anymore. I don't think it's maintained. So I don't know. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I won't. I don't really mind if people reverse engineer the binary too much because it's not going to be a great deal of help. And even the description to this challenge will be a hint. It'll say something like you need to get. Um, I can't remember what the score is, but you need to get a certain amount of points, which is basically impossible in the time that you have. And my hope here basically is that players will run something like Wireshark and see that there's some network traffic going backwards and forwards. And whenever they do that, they can then go ahead and set up some like BERT proxy. So this will be a not difficult, but there's a few steps to do it on Windows if you don't already have this set up. You'll need to go into the proxy settings in Windows, set this to the BERT local host and then the port number. But you'll also need to go to manage user certificates and you'll need to download the burp certificate and you'll need to add it in here as a trusted root authority was it this one certificates yeah i think i added it here yeah port swigger ca and that's basically because it's going to be a https connection and if you want to capture the traffic with burp it'll need to be able to decrypt and re-encrypt that so that's why you need to set all of that up and if you do that you will then end up with something like this. So notice that we ran the game and we have all of these post requests. Every time that a score is updated, every time we squash a bug, it sends this thing saying, okay, one bug squashed and it has a user ID linked to it. So it comes back and says, yeah, this is your new score. And this is basically a problem. It's been moved to the server side. So how are we going to cheat in this game if everything has been done on the server side and we don't have control of the server side like we do with the client side code? So one of the first things people will probably think to do here is to send one of these requests to the repeater and then just play around with some of the values. Like, can we change this to 1337 and click send? Actually, we get a message back saying the session has expired. So we need to do that start game again. Why don't we just run the game and I'll just regenerate some of these connections. Let's clear the existing history. Okay, don't want to clear it now because it's got the start game. Uh, all right, start game and let's get a point as well. Okay, so the game has started. We've got one point. Let me send that one to the repeater. And this time, let's get rid of this. Yeah, this time, let's change this to 1337. Click send. And we get this message back. How could you score more than one point, i.e. 1337? Anti-cheat detection is very suspicious right now. And it's reset our score to zero. So let's try it again. Let's do one. So one works fine. What if we do like minus one? Again, we get this negative point. So you're trying to cheat what's going on. Maybe we try and send like a string to see if there's any like weird conversions happening. And again, we've got this anti-cheat. We don't really know exactly what it's checking. That's the whole point of things being on the server side. But we can kind of probe this and get an idea what is going to be allowed and what is not. Let's go back again. Let me just do one. What happens if I do one? Send, send, send. Maybe we can just brute force this. But no, look at that. It's actually... Whenever we start brute forcing the request, we're also getting this too many requests, anti-cheat triggered, and it's resetting the score whenever it does that. So it's very counterproductive. Now, one thing that you might also try here is to take a copy of this. What if we just go here and then add a second one? Is it going to add two points? We'll click send. No, the score is updated by one. Okay. What if I change this one and say this is a capsule B because JSON keys are case sensitive. Let me do send. And this time I get a score of three. Oh, the score was already at, oh, I've got to reset the game as well. Okay, the score was already at one. So I got two points for doing that. Let us, let's go back here, does it? We'll send a post request to start game. 
send. It's going to give us an ID. I'll take a copy of that. Go back to the one we were working with. That's our new user ID. There we go. Send. All right, there you go. Two points. So how many variations of this string can we put in? Can we? What's the maximum number of points we can get in a single request? And this is where I'm going to go over to the server. So at the moment, I'm running this just on my Linux system. I've got a Pirate OS system here. And you can just see it's just a Flask server, which is dealing with all this. And then it's being exposed to my local server here as well. So that we can actually access it through the domain, cat.tunnel2.dev. And yeah, it's forwarding all of those requests. And basically, you can put together a solve script, something like this. We need to stay within the limits. The limits are actually three requests per second. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to generate the variations. Here is the, us doing that. So we'll generate the variations. As far as I remember, there's 4,096 variations. And we've been told already in the description of the challenge that we need to get 100,000 points, which is not possible without this cheat. And yeah, it's going to go through that. It's going to send three requests per second. And I guess let's give it a go. Let's do Python solve. See this? Every time it is sending a request, it's updating by 4,096 points. And there we go. After about maybe 20 requests, we get back our flag. Integrity, game hacking, anti-cheat is also fun. And I'll just show you then. We have our server here. What's actually happening? Uh, we've got the rate limit in check. We have the sessions being created. We've got this is rate limited. So it'll basically reset your points if they're going over that limit. It will. Uh, this is a little bit, I mean, obviously I've designed this to be a challenge. There's no real reason to have this on the server side. But the whole point is it's only checking to make sure there is one bug squashed. It's not making sure that all of the different case sensitivities are accounted for there as well. And yeah, that's about it. I was going to make a third part, but I don't really think I have time. Maybe I will. If I do, I'll make a video for it as well. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and this challenge. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.